In this Photoshop Elements Sharpen tutorial, we'll be looking at several different ways to sharpen up a picture that may be just a little bit blurry. Now if you enjoy this video, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also click that like button. Okay, let's get started. There are several different Photoshop Elements sharpen techniques that you can use to improve a picture. Now, which technique depends upon the picture and what the actual problem is. In this one, for instance, the background is in sharper focus than the cat. So the cat was in front, but the camera was grabbing the background for the autofocus. So the cat's just a little bit out of focus. But there's a lot of detail in the cat, and that can be used with one technique. It's a great technique. Look at that in just a second. On this one here, the overall picture is pretty soft. It's actually just out of focus, clear on the whole picture. And there's not that much detail in this, so this requires a different technique to increase the apparent focus. If it's like this, there's nothing you can do about that. This picture is useless. There's not enough detail in here to focus on anything. So this is a useless picture. And finally over here, we have some motion in here. And there's another technique for working with the motion. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll work through these. I'll start off with the favorite one here. And if you have a picture like this, and it's just a little bit soft focus, but there's a lot of detail in the picture, a lot of fur detail in here, a lot of things that you can work with, you can increase the contrast of the edge detail in here, and that can make the picture appear to be more in focus. Now, it really is a trick you can't come in and add in any additional detail. You know, Photoshop Elements doesn't have any detail to add back in here, so all you can do is to try to accentuate the detail that's already in. But by accentuating that detail, that can make it appear to be more in focus. So let me show you this trick. This is a great trick, and I like this one a lot for this kind of an effect. Okay, let's grab the background, drag it up here to the New Layer button, just like that. Now go up to the Filter menu, come down to Other, and grab the High Pass Filter. This gives you kind of the strange black and white effect, but as you can see here, if you look carefully, you're really just seeing edges of things. It's going in and it's finding all those edges. So we can use that to accentuate our edges. Now you can come down on this. The lower the number is, the less is grabbed. The higher the number, the more is grabbed. Gets some really kind of strange effects in here. But I found that anywhere between 4 and 5 usually works out pretty well. Let's just do 5 on this one, on our radius, and choose OK. So this kind of a strange black and white thing on top of our regular image. We're now going to blend this back into the original image using the blend modes right here. What you want is one of the blend modes down in this section. There's an overlay. You can see how that looks. So it really just kind of sharpens the whole thing up real nicely. There's with it on and there's with it off. So it really does a great job on sharpening up your picture. There's soft light, not quite as sharp. There's hard light. I normally use hard light on this. We can go to vivid light. It's even sharper, but it's beginning to get a bit contrasting in the background. But there it is without and there it is with. You can see how it really sharpens up the effect in here. It's not actually making it technically sharper, because again, that requires putting in more detail, which we don't have. But it is increasing the contrast of all the edges of all that little bit of detail in there. And by increasing that contrast, it looks like it's more in focus. And that's all that matters anyway, is if it looks like it's in focus or not. So there we go. Great technique. And again, that's making a new layer and filter other high pass, try four to five in there somewhere, and then using one of these options down here. We'll leave this one at vivid light. So a great technique, again, if it's just a little bit of soft focus and if you have a lot of texture in here, a lot of detail, great technique for that. Okay, on this one, we'll save this one for last. This is the hardest. Of course, we're not doing this one at all. We'll just ignore that one. Let's do this one next. Now in this one, there's some motion in here, and we can try a technique here, a new tool in Photoshop Elements. I'm using Photoshop Elements 15 right now. 
go up to the Enhance menu, come down to Shake Reduction right here. This brings up a new tool. There it is. And it has this box in here. And that's what it just did. Let me just go to before. There's the before. Here's the after. What it does is it tries to look where things have been blurred or doubled. And it tries to remove that. I'm going to move the center of this over the cat's face because that's really the most important focal point in this picture. And we'll see how it does. Actually, not very, not very well. Let's try it down here again. So you can try different spots to get the best effect. And that's not too bad. So here's our before. And that's our after. It, it's sharpening it up quite a bit. Bring back a lot of detail. Notice how it is getting more contrast in there, but it's just trying to clean up that edge. Now we're getting a bit of a doubling effect in here. Notice here's the edge of the ear, and there's a doubling back in there. Kind of strange. Sometimes if you move this a little bit, it might clean that up. And then down here, there's a sensitivity control. We'll go a bit further to the right and see what we get. That's a little bit better. We really kind of minimize that edge. Okay, so there's the before, and there's the after. That's a definite improvement on that picture. Go ahead and choose OK. And that was using that shake reduction, a great new tool. If you're working with an older version of Photoshop Elements, you won't have this, and you can't use that particular technique. But it works very, very well if you have motion in the picture or maybe if you've moved the camera a little bit. Okay, so that's our second technique. Now the third technique, this is the hard one, and the whole picture here is soft focus. Even the chair is out of focus a little bit. The cat's out of focus. Nothing in the picture is actually in focus. It's just a little bit soft. Also, there's not a lot of detail in here. Because there's not a lot of detail, that high pass filter simply won't work on this. Let me just demonstrate that and you'll see what I mean. Let's just make a new layer here. We'll go ahead and go through the process. Filter, other, high pass. And you can see right here, there's not a whole lot of detail for this to be grabbing. It's getting kind of the edge of the cat, but not much else. There's really no detail in the middle that's being picked up by this. So because of that, this technique really doesn't work out that well. You want to have some detail in there for that high pass filter technique. So we'll do this the hard way, do it manually. And there are two things you can do. The first thing I recommend is to increase the contrast of the picture a bit. And for photographs, I like to use the shadows highlights option right here. Let's go ahead and bring that up. There we go. There is shadows highlights. There it is without. There it is with. Now it's too bright in the shadow, so I'm going to bring down light and shadows a little bit. And let's bring up dark and high. It's just a touch. And move our midtone contrast over a little bit. So there's without and there's with. And just increasing the contrast a little bit on the picture helps quite a bit. It looks a little bit sharper this way. So that's your first thing is just to increase your contrast a little bit. Now the next thing we want to do is to try to do the same thing that the high pass filter does, which is to sharpen the edges of things. But since we don't have real edges to be working with much in here, no real detail to work with, we can do this manually in just a few spots. Now again, we're trying to trick the eye on this. If you sharpen up the edges of things, like around the ears, some of the ear detail, around the eyes, maybe around the nose, maybe around the front paw, if you sharpen up some of those areas, then the eye says, well, that's sharp, so the whole picture must be sharp. So we can try that. Now again, we can't add in detail that's not there, but we can add in more contrast between the pixels, and that accentuates what detail there is, and that can give us the effect of it being sharper. What you want for that is over here, you'll probably see this kind of drop tool. Click on that, that's the blur tool. Just to the right of that, click on that one. That's the Sharpen tool. There's the size of my brush. That's at 95 pixels on this particular picture. I have a strength set right in the middle. 
and protect detail is selected. Everything else can stay as is. Let's now zoom in just a little bit on the face. There we go. And then back to our sharpen tool. I'm just going to kind of paint right around the edge of the eye here. And it's going to increase the contrast of the pixels and that will make it look a little bit sharper. You can't go too far with this or it's going to begin looking really strange. So don't go too far, don't do too much. Just try just a bit just to increase the contrast around the individual pixels just around edges of things and around those edges will make the whole picture look just a bit sharper. A little bit around the, the fur there and let's get the edge of the paw in here a little bit. Let me show you what happens if you go too far on this. I'm going to take a spot right up here. There we go. Now it's 15 strokes. You can see how it begins to really blotch up. So you don't want to go very far on this or it really messes it up. I'm going to use the Control Z key here to back up on that. There we go. Just back that out. Okay, so we did everything else in here. And we use the Sharpen tool to kind of sharpen up around some of those edges. Let's see how that looks. There's the before and there's the after. You see, it's not really in focus. It's not really sharp but it's vastly improved over what we had originally. Let's go ahead and make this thing fit in our screen here. There we go. So there's the before and there's the after. Again, you can't put in detail that's not there, and this was kind of lacking in detail, but we can make it look a lot sharper than it was by just some real careful attention to these tools. So those are my three main techniques. First one, if you happen to have detail in there, let's just get tool options out of the way. There we go. If you happen to have detail or texture in here, then using the high pass filter is a great way to go. Works really, really well. So there's without and that's with. Real great technique. If you don't have any real detail in there, let's just zoom in a little bit here, fit on screen. If you don't have any real detail, then you'll have to use the second technique first try to increase your contrast. You can use any tool you like on that. On this one I use the shadow highlights which works out very well. But you can use the brightness contrast or levels as well. You just want to increase your contrast a bit on the image. And then come in and very carefully use the sharpen tool around edges of things that should have more detail. The front paw here, the eyes, the nose, around the ears. And with those done it gives the effect of it being a bit more in focus. So again, we're just cheating a little bit here, but it does a pretty good job. And then finally, our last technique here, and this requires having Photoshop Elements, you know, a modern version of Photoshop Elements to do this because you need to have that tool right here, the Shake Reduction tool. And that works really well if you have motion in your picture to kind of clean up that motion. So there we go three different ways to come in and sharpen up a picture and again depending upon the particular problems in the photograph you need to choose one or the other of these different techniques. Last little thing I just want to mention in here is the right over here there we go the adjust sharpness tool I really don't like this one it really doesn't work out that well for me I found these other tools are better this tries to do the same kind of thing that we did here with the high pass filter but the high pass filter is more controllable and does a better job. So instead of using that, I go for the high pass filter technique. So there we go. That's how you can come in and improve the sharpness of a photograph. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.